Hello, everybody. This is Brooks Rayford, CEO of NC Tech, and welcome to this briefing on the release of our quarterly leadership poll. In the early months of COVID during the spring and summer of 2020, we did some polling to take the pulse of leaders in the tech sector about how COVID was impacting their organizations and get a sense of their expectations for the near term. The results proved of great interest to our members and to the media. So starting last year, we launched a quarterly poll that asked some of uh, similar questions about a general business sentiment, like on hiring, growth, as well as some questions that might rotate in or out based on current events or issues. The second quarterly poll for 2023 was conducted within the last week, and we are releasing the results today. You'll find this on our website at nctech.org slash pulse after we have concluded this live briefing. We polled nearly 400 people and had a 40% response rate. The respondents are members of our board of directors, board of advisors, tech CEOs of North Carolina companies, and leaders of large tech hubs that are or, or sites that are based in North Carolina but not headquartered here. Our sponsoring partner from the inception of these polls has been the Stearns Financial Group. Their founder, Dennis Stearns, serves on the NC Tech Board of Advisors and joins me today. Welcome, Dennis. Thank you, Brooks. Good to be here. And uh, this is an important survey, uh, as always, because as Sun Tzu said, uh, <clears throat> foreknowledge cannot be inferred from events. It cannot be projected from calculation. It has to be grasped from people's knowledge. And so uh, having talked to a number of public and private folks who were in this survey, I'll provide some texture as we go along uh, to the numbers. Sounds great, thank you. So I'll walk through the results and highlight some areas where we've seen some shifts in sentiments or activities from the last quarterly poll and where we see some consistency. So if we'll move the slides forward, we'll get started. So the first few questions are just demographics. To give you a flavor of who's answering the poll, we ask, uh, these respondents, what is their number of North Carolina-based employees in their organizations? And you can see that it's pretty um, roughly divided in, in the uh, segments here, 1 to 10, 11 to 100, all the way up to 1,000 plus. I will say that before we move on from this slide, this is not representative of the broader North Carolina business communities. You can imagine the percentage of all businesses that are small and medium is very high. And so we skew a little bit on the larger side. Next slide. We ask if the organization uh, is headquartered in North Carolina, and this has been pretty consistent across the polling, about uh, two thirds saying yes. Um, this is also consistent with our membership. So in, in the NC Tech Association, about two thirds or slightly more than that are North Carolina headquartered. Next slide. We asked about your role in the organization, the person who's responding. We saw an uptick in C-suite. So it's it's always been the largest uh, proportion, uh, but even larger this time. Next. All right, here we get into the sentiment question. So first we ask, how do you perceive this past quarter has been for the state's tech sector, broadly defined, broadly speaking? And uh, here you can see the distribution of uh, responses, uh, great and good together make up a majority, a bare majority, but a majority. Okay is about a third. And uh, what's interesting is that from the last quarterly poll, uh, good went up eight points. Okay went down seven points. So uh, there was a bit of a shift there. And the next question is a car, uh, sort of a, a corollary to this, which is, uh, if you'll move to the next slide, how do you feel the past quarter has been for your organization specifically? And what we saw here is good went up 10 points and OK went down seven. Uh, so Dennis, one thing that we've noticed in past polling is that, interestingly, uh, our respondents tend to be more optimistic and positive about their own organization's performance uh, than they are about the broader sector. Not sure what the psychology is behind that, but what are you? What are your thoughts about these two slides together and what you're hearing from those in your network? Yeah, I think uh, you know it's always easier to understand what's going on inside the walls of your own organization, and I think some of this has to do with many of the C-suite folks I talk to, both public and private, are uh, knowing 
uh, in fact, the stats were over 80% know a company CEO or company experiencing a rolling recession right now. So mm-hmm. they see a lot of churn going on, on out in the economy, even though technically uh, the economy as a whole is not in a recession. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of anxiety about this uh, most forecast recession in the history of the United States that hasn't arrived yet. But again, I would argue it has arrived. It's just arriving in different sectors. And uh, I think at least so far, most of the tech sector has escaped some of the some of the punishment. But, you know, if you're selling things, whether it's services or products to other companies, and they're tapping the brakes because they're worried about the economy, that, that's going to impact your own company. Absolutely. Uh, well, this next slide will show a bit of a future, speaking of predictions and projections. Um, uh, we asked, asked respondents to answer this question. I expect that over the next quarter, our business will what? Uh, you can see growth still is a, a dominant answer. As compared to the last quarterly poll, um, you'll see here about that uh, grow is 65.5%. And last uh, time it was 62, so it's improved a tad. And actually, 6.1% expected uh, the, their business to decline in the last poll. Here it's down to 1.3. Again, maybe it's the sector that's being uh, being uh, queried. But um, again, holding holding and even improving a bit on optimism for upcoming quarter. We'll see a little later. There still is a lot of hesitancy, curiosity, uh, anxiety to use your term, Dennis, about you know what may be impacting not just uh, from an economic standpoint, but impacting the sector. Uh, we ask some open-ended questions about that that give a variety of answers. But this, this this is sort of feeding in the last couple of slides where the optimism seems to still be holding its own, at least in the sector that we are we're, uh, polling. All right. We always ask a hiring question. So is your organization reducing headcount, not hiring or hiring? This one is very similar to last quarter, up or down a point or two in each of these categories. Um, so not, not enough to signal a notable shift anywhere. Percentage-wise, the biggest change was reducing headcount is 4%. Last time it was about two. So it's doubled, but still very low. And um, hiring has ticked down a point or so, not hiring has ticked up a point or so. Uh, but holding pretty steady. That's yeah. interesting because I think a lot of the headlines, Dennis, that we see about tech layoffs are the large uh, enterprise tech companies that people know of that are having some global uh, force reductions uh, that they say in most cases are a, real, a readjustment from um, aggressive hiring during COVID and having to um, uh, moderate that um, given current circumstances or concerns about the future. And yet uh, we're seeing that tech hiring is pretty broad based, meaning uh, in our monthly tech job trends report, we list the top 10 hirers of tech talent in North Carolina every month. In the last several months, 80% of the top 10 are have been non-tech companies, banks, uh, consulting firms, other companies. Yeah, and I think that's such an important point, Brooks, because Uh, Back to the Sun Tzu theme that uh, you cannot infer from events, a lot of people, when they saw the layoffs going on in Silicon Valley, thought, "Uh uh-oh, the tech sector Mm -hmm. in North Carolina may be in for some rough sledding, and the exact opposite is the case. So uh, uh, good for us. (laughs) Good for us. Hope, Hope it sticks. Okay, next slide. This is a new question. One of the things we ask our respondents to um, answer in each poll is, are there questions you might like to see in subsequent polling? And so clearly uh, the talk about recession has been fairly dominant debate about it. So the question here is, there is debate as to whether there will be a recession in 2023, traditionally defined as two consecutive quarters of contraction in GDP. Do you believe that will occur? And it's a fairly even distribution here. Uh, a lot of uncertainty, uh, a solid chunk saying, I don't think so, but a solid chunk saying they believe it will. Um, there are ordinarily, and, and Dennis, you know more about this than, than me, but ordinarily in a recessionary environment, a lot of indicators kind of follow huh, the downward or the, the negative trend, whether it's 
Um, unemployment goes up, wages are stagnant, uh, uh, inflation begins to rise, et cetera, et cetera. We're sort of seeing opposite of that, or at least not seeing those declines. So the, the, the usual constellation of indicators that are in concert with one another is not happening so far. Uh, what are you seeing? What are you hearing? Yeah, well, uh, the pandemic and post-pandemic, there was a big surge in buying of goods, and that has cooled off a lot. Mm -hmm. And services are now, uh, not just in the United States, not just in North Carolina, but globally, services have been growing pretty strongly. And so, again, that comes back to what does our North Carolina Tech member do for a living? Do they uh, sell products? Do they sell services? Do they sell some combination? How do the companies they sell to view technology uh, as the cutting edge? And again, this is where you, you look at the top eight companies that have driven the S&P 500 results in 2023 and left the other 492 in the dust, all are technology and artificial intelligence related. So again, uh, I, I think the good news is that from the standpoint of making sure that, that our tech companies' products and services are indispensable, we seem to be doing a reasonably good job. That's a good point. A lot of a, a number of indexes, uh, it's a very small percentage of them that are blowing out of the water <clears throat> and pulling the index along with them. Okay, let's move to the next. This is where we begin to get into some open-ended questions. So we we uh, snag some of the things that stood out. What makes you optimistic about the next 12 months? Um, some of the answers that are similar to last quarter, uh, the first one on the left there, resiliency of the NC Tech uh, ecosystem, uh, diversity of North Carolina's economy. We hear that a lot from economists, as a matter of fact. We're not as heavily dependent on one or two major sectors as some states are, so we're fortunate that way. You start to see AI show up uh, now uh, more in some of these questions. Interest rates and inflation stabilizing is a, a sense of optimism for some. Uh, the 2024 election has appeared here. Interestingly, it will appear on the next slide as well. So some people are optimistic about that. And um, and you'll see some con some contradictory uh, answers on the, this optimism slide. A number of people talked about the continued demand for services and tech offerings and um, uh, less churn in, employee, uh, in employees and sustainable salary growth, those sorts of things. And if you'll move to the next slide, Alex, we ask what makes you, uh, what concerns you over the next 12 months? Some of those same things appear. <laughs> so uh, I guess where you stand depends on where you sit is another way to look at this. Uh, but among the things that stand out are, again, the election um, appears here, reduced demand for products. You comment on that, Dennis. Uh, recession uncertainty, we've already touched on that. And then AI, the uncertainty of the impact of that on jobs, uh, on companies. Um, I think there's optimism on what it might what AI might bring in terms of efficiencies um, and uh, just productivity. But there's, the flip side of that coin is what's the impact on my business, on employees, on my job. And so those all appear here. Uh, that does wrap up the results for our Q2 poll. I want to thank Dennis again for his firm's support of the organization and for this polling series. And a reminder that you can find this recording on our website at nctech.org slash pulse as soon as we can get the recording posted. So for now, thanks for viewing and we'll see you next time.